Right now, as you watch this, 10 million people are living their lives underwater. Not in submarines, not in some futuristic sci-fi colony, but in ordinary homes, on ordinary streets, in one of the richest, most advanced nations on Earth. Welcome to the Netherlands, a country that by all logic shouldn't exist. Because here's the thing that'll blow your mind, 26% of this country sits below sea level. In some places, the ocean looms 15 feet higher than the land people call home. If the Dutch stopped fighting for just a few weeks, the sea would reclaim what was never meant to be land. Yet somehow, this tiny nation became Europe's economic powerhouse, the world's second largest food exporter, and a global leader in innovation. This is the story of the most audacious act of human defiance against nature in history. But it's also a cautionary tale, because what the Dutch built over 2,000 years might not survive the next 100. Act 1. The Geographical Challenge. To understand why the Netherlands is basically playing chess with the ocean, you need to see what they're up against. Imagine you're standing where three of Europe's mightiest rivers, the Rhine, the Meuse and the Scheldt, converge and crash into the North Sea. For millennia, these rivers dumped sediment at their mouths, creating a massive delta, flat, waterlogged, and perpetually caught between land and sea. The ancient Romans called it a pitiful land flooded twice a day. They weren't wrong. This is the rhine meuse scheldt Delta, and it's one of the most flood-prone places on the planet. The rivers push water downstream, the North Sea pushes tidal surges inland, and in the middle, a pancake-flat landscape that offers zero natural protection. Before human intervention, much of what's now the Netherlands was peat swamps, tidal marshes, and shallow lakes. Basically, an aquatic nightmare. But the Dutch didn't just accept this geography, they rewrote it. And the price of failure? Measured in thousands of lives, the history of the Netherlands is written in flood disasters. In 1421, the St. Elizabeth's Flood struck on November 18th, a feast day that would be remembered for horror instead of celebration. A massive storm surge overwhelmed the dikes protecting the Grote Hollandse Vaard region. Between 2,000 and 10,000 people drowned as entire villages vanished beneath the waves. 23 communities were simply erased from existence. Fast forward to 1953. The North Sea Flood became modern Netherlands' defining catastrophe. On the night of January 31st, a perfect storm of high tides and hurricane-force winds created a storm surge that reached 18 feet above normal sea level. The aging dikes, weakened by years of wartime neglect, began to fail. Within hours, 89 dikes collapsed. Seawater flooded 500 square miles of Dutch territory, one-sixth of the entire country. The human toll was staggering. 1,836 people killed, 72,000 evacuated, 200,000 farm animals drowned. Entire islands in Zeeland province were submerged. In the village of Eau de Tong, 305 people died. One survivor, a 20-year-old named Jos de Boe, lost 42 family members in a single night. The economic damage? Over 1 billion guilders, roughly $5.4 billion in today's money. But more than that, the flood shattered the Dutch sense of security. They'd been fighting water for centuries, but nature had just delivered a brutal reminder. The sea was still winning. Act 2. The Dutch solution. So how do you stop the ocean? The Dutch answer, one dike at a time, for 2,000 years. The story begins way back in Roman times, around 100 AD, when the first crude earthen dikes appeared. Early settlers, the Frisians, built small protective barriers of stacked peat and clay, maybe 70 centimeters high. Laughably small by modern standards, but it established a principle that would define Dutch culture. Whom the water hurts, he the water stops. By the Middle Ages, the Dutch had mastered the polder system, arguably the most important innovation in their entire history. Here's how it works. First, you build a dike in a ring around a section of waterlogged land or shallow lake. Then you pump out all the water inside. What's left? Fertile, usable land sitting below the water level outside your dike. Early polders used windmills to power the pumping, those iconic Dutch windmills you see on postcards. They weren't decorative, they were industrial water lifting machines. The secret weapon, the Archimedes screw, a helical pump invented by the Greek mathematician. 
As wind turned the blades, the screw rotated inside a tube, spiraling water upward and over the dike. One modern electric pump can do the work of 24 windmills combined. But the truly insane part, they didn't stop at protecting land, they started creating it. The Dutch didn't just prevent flooding, they declared war on the sea itself and began stealing land from it. The Beemster Polder, completed in 1612, transformed a 70 square kilometer lake into farmland using 43 windmills. Success breeds ambition. Over centuries, the Netherlands drained lake after lake, polder after polder. The ultimate achievement, the province of Flevoland, the world's largest land reclamation project. After a 1916 flood, the Dutch decided to drain the entire Zuider Zee, an inland sea. In 1932, they completed the Afsluit Dyke, an 18-mile-long dam that turned the Zuider Zee into the freshwater Eisel Meer. Then they began draining sections of it. The Norduist polder was finished in 1942, in the middle of World War II. Two more polders followed, Oosterlijk Flevoland in 1957 and Zuidlijk Flevoland in 1968. In 1986, these reclaimed seabeds became the Netherlands' 12th province. Entire cities, like Lelystad, the provincial capital, now stand on land that was open water just 70 years ago. Think about that. People are living in houses, going to work, raising families on what used to be the ocean floor. But all that land needs protection. And after 1953, the Dutch built something that would change everything. The Delta Works, named one of the seven wonders of the modern world by the American Society of Civil Engineers, alongside the Channel Tunnel and the Golden Gate Bridge. The plan was audacious, seal off the vulnerable rhine meuse scheldt Delta with a network of dams, storm surge barriers, locks and reinforced dikes. Construction began in 1958, just five years after the disaster. The project would take nearly 40 years to complete and cost almost 5 billion euros. 13 massive structures were built. They shortened the Dutch coastline by 450 miles, dramatically reducing the length of dikes exposed to the sea. They created 895 square miles of new protected land. The Crown Jewel, the Ooster Shell Deckering, the Eastern Scheldt Storm Surge Barrier, 9 kilometers of engineering genius, 65 enormous concrete piers, each weighing 18,000 tons, planted on the seabed between three channels. Between them, 62 massive steel gates, ranging from 16 to 39 feet high and weighing up to 535 tons each. Here's what makes it brilliant. The gates stay open 99% of the time, allowing tidal water to flow through and preserving the unique saltwater ecosystem. But when storm conditions threaten, the gates close in 80 minutes, creating an impenetrable wall against the North Sea. On October 4, 1986, Queen Beatrix officially opened the barrier with words that still resonate. The stormflowed Kering is gesloten. The Delta Werken sein voltoid. Zeeland is veilig. The flood barrier is closed. The Delta works are completed. Zeeland is safe. Act 3. Living below sea level. So what's it actually like to live in a place where the ocean is physically higher than your roof? For 21% of the Dutch population, about 3.6 million people, this is just normal. Major cities like Amsterdam, Rotterdam and Delft exist in this upside-down world. The lowest point in the Netherlands sits 22 feet below sea level. The infrastructure keeping these cities dry is mind-boggling. Take the Ijemuiden pumping station near Amsterdam. It pumps approximately 1 billion cubic meters of water into the sea every year. 1 billion. That's enough to fill 400,000 Olympic swimming pools. Other stations, like Via Norda Kogen, can move 1,400 cubic meters per minute, creating a river of water one kilometer long, one meter wide, and one meter high in just 60 seconds. These systems run 24-7, 365. Computer controlled, sensor monitored, with redundant backups. If they stopped, within days, parts of the Netherlands would begin flooding. The entire country depends on constant unending vigilance. Daily life has adapted in unique ways. Regional water boards, water schappen, some dating back 800 years, maintain water levels, dikes and drainage. 
it's a separate layer of government alongside national, provincial and municipal authorities. The Dutch even elect water board representatives. Water management isn't a technical problem here, it's a cultural identity. Act 4. Modern Challenges But here's where the story takes a dark turn. Everything the Dutch built was designed for the climate of the past, and that climate no longer exists. Global temperatures have risen more than 2 degrees Celsius since 1901 in the Netherlands. Sea levels are accelerating upward. Current projections estimate a rise of up to 1 meter by 2100, potentially more if polar ice sheets collapse faster than expected. Meanwhile, climate change is also making rainfall more extreme. The rivers, Rhine, Meuse, Isel, Waal, must discharge increasing volumes of water during storms. In 1993 and 1995, massive river floods nearly overwhelmed the dikes, forcing the evacuation of 250,000 people and 1 million animals. The dikes held barely. Total damages over 400 million euros. For a country built on controlling water, climate change represents an existential crisis. The Delta program, the Dutch government's climate adaptation agency, now operates under terrifying projections. Their 2023 report was blunt. Current protections might only remain adequate until 2050, and only if measures are accelerated. The question haunting Dutch planners, do they keep building higher dikes forever? Or do they need to fundamentally reimagine their relationship with water? The answer? Both. And the solutions are as innovative as anything in their 2,000-year history. The Netherlands is a monument to human ingenuity a testament to what people can achieve when survival demands the impossible. For 2,000 years, they've fought the ocean to a standstill. But the fight is changing. The water is rising faster, the storms are intensifying, and the old playbook, build higher, pump harder, might not work anymore. The Dutch have always said, God created the earth, but the Dutch created the Netherlands. For two millennia, that's been true. The question for the next century is whether they can create it again. Because if the Netherlands, the best prepared, most advanced, most experienced nation on earth at holding back the sea, if they can't survive what's coming, what hope does the rest of the world have?